Probably, there are not so many cars in the world that they either cannot stand, to the scarlet veil before their eyes and gnashing of teeth, or selflessly love. But it is precisely in such a scheme that the attitude towards the Land Rover Defender fits in, people confirm real advantages and hate, recognize real shortcomings and love. So what is so special about it, in this very deaf? Hate number five, you are not a pilot. In the reviews of the owners, there are not so many references to weak dynamics and the fact that the car does not drive, even if they belong, so to speak, to the pen of furious definitists. However, even true fans mention the dynamics among the advantages of the car no more often. Indeed, well, what kind of person in their right mind would expect from a professional SUV with a high torque, but not the most powerful diesel engine and the aerodynamics of a 20-foot container, the speed and acceleration characteristics of a sports car? Nevertheless, such originals still occur. It's just that once they purchase the Defender as a gel-in substitute, no, well, SUV. SUV. Imported, premium brand? Undoubtedly. Expensive? And never cheap. And the general style of the Panzerkampfwagen is present. Here the newly minted owner sits behind the wheel and realizes that he is not a gel end for you, not a gel end at all. 15.8 seconds, up to 100 it's so long. The urban dynamics are especially depressing. To make the deaf move more or less vigorously in the city stream, you need to wield the lever and pedals very intensively. The fact is that the diesel has a rather narrow operating speed range, plus the six-speed gearbox was not developed specifically for this model, but migrated to it almost unchanged from the Ford Transit vans. First gear is very short and the car twitches when shifting up. And you need to be able to get underway from the second one, otherwise the clutch will not last long. As for driving on the highway, the most comfortable mode for this car is a speed of 90 to 100 kilometers slash h, and even fanatical fans note this. Another question is that those who understood why they bought such a car do not bother at all. Love number five, he is wearing a protective tunic, it will drive me crazy. Actually, it is not surprising that the reason for the purchase and subsequent disappointment was the impressive appearance of the car. Detractors of the Land Rover Defender can be as clever as they want in wit, calling it either a hut or an aluminum shell on wheels. The fact remains that the Defender has long become one of the icons of automotive style, the same as the Porsche 911, the classic Jeep, or the same G-Wagon. On this car, you can go fishing, hunting, or just mix the dirt, and then drive to the car wash, change clothes, and come to a secular party in the city center. It is not for nothing that the Defenders are in the garage of the British royal family, and it is not for nothing that the Queen moves around her estate on the Defender. One has only to note that Def imposes much higher requirements for matching the style of the car and the owner. The image of an extravagant aristocratic adventurer with a slight unshaven is fine, but a fashion designer in shocking transgender style clothes would look extremely alien behind the wheel of a Land Rover Defender. And with all this, Def is creative, it's independence, it's a philosophy, it's avant-garde, it's a lifestyle. As a result, the interest that the Def driver feels from other road users. The Defender is always in the spotlight, and sometimes it even begins to seem that the owners of polished, screwed-up SUVs secretly dream of such an embodiment of brutality. And how the eyes of the boys burn in the yard when the deaf parks there after the rides, covered with dry clay up to the very roof, like a hero of a heroic epic with the blood of a defeated monster. Hate number four, the blue ball is spinning, spinning. And certainly no one, not even the most ardent fans, starts talking about polished handling, because on the road deaf is perceived as a cross between a cart and a school bus. Nevertheless, many, buying the DEF, sincerely believe that permanent all-wheel drive is the key to excellent handling, especially on slippery surfaces. No matter how. A slight slope, a wide track, rolled in very even snow, and you almost taxied in time. For example, you stared at the navigator, and at a speed of only 60 km slash h the car goes into a skid, and an attempt to align the car with the steering wheel leads to rotation and flying into a snowdrift. Normal such a story, quite typical and understandable. 
there is practically no reactive action on the steering wheel, it is impossible to quickly shift gears due to the low selectivity of the lever and an inconveniently located clutch pedal, the electronic gas pedal completely breaks the connection with the driver, so it is very difficult to stretch the car with gas if you were not ready to skid in advance. Well, driving tens or even hundreds of kilometers in the mode of constant combat readiness, keeping the engine in the pickup zone is another exercise. The situation is no better with maneuvers in cramped conditions. In particular, this applies to the long wheelbase 110th. And it's hard to get used to the dimensions, and the wheels turn at a fairly small angle, and the steering wheel is very long, 3.375 turns from lock to lock. In general, in the parking lot you begin to feel like an elephant drover who drove into the market rows with Chinese porcelain. Love number four, you are my creation. In fact, even a person who is well aware of why he buys a Defender very quickly becomes convinced that in the stock form the car is very far from the ideal he saw, and in order to get closer to this ideal, you need to redo the car for yourself. And then tatted at him. Fanfare sounds. Def turns out to be an excellent constructor for adults, an excellent blank for tuning and implementing design ideas, an excellent platform for off-road refinement, even for hunting and fishing, even for off-road competitions. Noise insulation, thermal insulation, waterproofing, additional stoves, interior upholstery, and all that for convenience. Interwheel locks, snorkel, power bumper, winch, suspension lift, reinforced springs and large mud wheels for off-road capability. And so on, and so on. Those who use the car as an expediter are especially diligent in alterations, because initially the possibilities for transforming the interior of this car are close to zero. This is especially true for the 90th, but the 110th went very far in this regard. You can't recline the back of the driver's seat, you can't organize a sleeping place. So you have to build multi-tiered platforms inside, allowing you to organize a place to sleep. And it is worth recognizing that among the Land Rover Defender prepared for long distance travel, there are many exceptionally well thought out and successful designs that turn a car into a motor home without changing its dimensions. Hate number three, and outside the window, it's either rain or snow. When talking about the shortcomings of the Land Rover Defender, as a rule, they always mention the leakage of openings. More or less, the problem with flying door seals was solved only in 2012, but this decision still cannot be called final. Even a relatively fresh def can leak in heavy rain, tiny wipers cannot cope with cleaning the windows, and the side windows are constantly covered with mud. At the sink, be sure to warn hard workers not to be too zealous, directing a jet of water under high pressure at window frames and doorways. Forget to warn and you will get puddles on the seats and things in the trunk that need to be laid out in the sun to dry. For the same reason, the Defender is not very good for traveling on graders. The car, like a huge vacuum cleaner, literally draws in a raised cloud of dust that fills all corners of a rather big cabin, is found in the most seemingly inaccessible places and nasty creaks on the teeth. There are also problems with the microclimate. The stove freezes one leg, and the other freezes, the rear passengers always freeze, the windows fog up in the rain, and desperately freeze in winter. This is especially noticeable in traffic jams. As soon as the engine speed drops to idle, the efficiency of the standard heater drops to zero, and it becomes cold in the already seemingly warmed up cabin. Def doesn't like winter at all. According to the testimonies of the owners, moreover, they are quite benevolent. At minus 13, we have a guaranteed launch. Minus 15 is a lottery. And at minus 18, you don't even have to approach the car. Naturally, we are talking about a car from the passenger compartment without an installed a starting preheater, which in our conditions is not becoming a luxury, but a vital device, as well as additional autonomous stoves. Water, by the way, Defender also does not like. It seems that it does not belong to the number of digital cars, but there are still some electronic brains in it, and it is not recommended to drown them. About water resistance has already been mentioned above, so you can be sure, the water in the Ford will definitely find its hold. In addition, the generator on the Duratorque engines is located quite low, and also does not like diving into the aquatic environment. 
A lot of critical passages are also addressed to the furious suspension. If you buy such a car, then know that you will pay more than a million, but you will not get any comfort. No. And this is the secret meaning. If you want comfort, buy a Mercedes ML and drive on asphalt roads that comply with strict GOST. At the same time, the same suspension deservedly receives its portion of applause for off-road work. In order to hang the Defender on the diagonal, you need to try very hard. Love number three, I'll take some simple luggage with me on the road. If the Defender needs to be seriously prepared for autonomous long trips, then it is ready right away for relatively short trips to the country house, fishing, hunting, or just a picnic. Most importantly, the crew is not too limited in the amount and weight of things that they can take with them to nature. This is how the owner of the Defender 110 describes a typical set of things that his car takes on board before taking him and his family on vacation, for camp beds, for folding large, very large chairs, a folding table for four people, two tents, one ten-seater, the second one for four, an inflatable double kayak, two backpacks of 170 liters, three large bags of 100 liters each, life jackets, tools, food for two weeks, two adult bicycles, a large baby stroller, two cans of 20 liters, a canister of water 10 liters, well, every little thing. Yes, there can be so many people in it that it's hard to even imagine. One of the owners says that he once drove 20 people with skis and snowboards. Hate number two, I remember all your cracks. Haters of defenders excel in wit. They say, they say, if you see deaf on the road, then he definitely goes either to the service or from the service. Fans of the model are not far behind them, whose folklore is full of jokes like the driver of the Defender cannot get lost because he will always find his way home by drops of oil, or if you didn't find a puddle of oil under your car in the morning, then it's in it ended. The breakability of these cars has become no less a legend than the cars themselves. And, although there are many owners who will only shrug their shoulders and say that although the mileage of their aluminum horse has exceeded 300,000 kilometers, it has never seriously broken down, we have to admit that there are certain reasons for all these jokes. Let's start with the problem that almost all Defender owners face, oil leakage through the steering gear seals of varying degrees of intensity. Usually this sore begins to appear at a run of about 60,000 kilometers. When contacting the official service, the first thing the owner hears is the merciless word replacement, and the replacement is from 45 to 55,000 rubles for the unit itself, plus work. Then the owner thoughtfully scratches his head and goes to a specialized, but unofficial service, where he is offered to cure the disease by overhauling the gearbox with the replacement of oil seals. The repair kit costs very differently, from 835 to 6,108 rubles, depending on the manufacturer. Agree, this is a completely different calico, but the warranty for the rebuilt gearbox does not exceed one year, which means that, in principle, in a year you may again need the help of an auto doctor. Oil seals are flowing not only in the steering gear, but also in the transfer case. The tie rods themselves are plasticine, and if you want to seriously knead the dirt, they must be changed to reinforced ones. The same applies to rather weak axle shafts, especially the notorious left rear, which in the folklore of definitists seems to be a real consumable. If the cardans are not injected in time, then the cross will wedge and cut off the ears. Due to the wear of the anther, as a result of active use in off-road conditions, dirt and water get inside the steering knuckles. This is followed by a loss of lubrication, and if this is not noticed in time, then you can get stuck for a tidy sum, because you will have to change not only the ball, but also the entire CV joint and hub bearings. There are a lot of problems with the electrician, in particular, the contacts of the steering column lights which often burn out, especially if you imprudently put more power bulbs. Finally, the body. Theoretically, it is completely duralumin and does not rust. That's right, it won't rust. That's just duralumin and steel form a galvanic couple, so that electrochemical corrosion, which turns aluminum parts into a kind of gray, powdery substance, is by no means a paranoid fantasy. In general, as Alexei Machalov, a well-known auto traveler, wrote, but what cannot be taken away is handsome, you bastard. Look at the soul rejoices. 
As soon as you imagine where you can climb on it, the birds are already singing in your soul. And when you remember all the brainwashing that this buzz accompanies, you immediately curse the day you met. Love number two, and you can't through. And again, we are faced with a strange situation when, despite the impressive list of congenital ailments, the owners point out reliability and endurance as the most important advantage. Indeed, death rarely breaks so that suddenly, and for good, to the point of losing mobility. The authors of reviews on the internet agree that although the defender breaks down quite often, meaning the unlucky instance, it almost always reaches the service itself. It limps, rings, and rattles with everything that is possible and impossible, but it rides, on the rear, on the front drive, on parole in one wing, but still it rides. Like, there is simply nothing to break in this car, because it is one of the unkillable. Another factor that determines the reliability and endurance, many consider the simplicity of design and maintainability. Everything is unscrewed, and almost any repair can be done in the field. In fact, this is true. I personally took part in the revival of the deaf, which had stalled in the swamp, and the only tool that was at our disposal was the Leatherman multi-tool, and in the field repair of the transfer case. They removed it, repaired it, installed it. It was hard, of course, as a devil, like life in Balashika, and the repair required a fair amount of strength training, but they fixed it. Hate number one, everyone has a right to the left. Probably, there is nothing worse than deceived expectations. I grew up on books by Gerald Durrell, and in them he constantly rolled around Africa in Land Rovers. By the way, do you know that Land Rover has become a household name in many African countries? So there they call SUVs of any brand, and their Toyota Land Rover sounds no more absurd than the word Jeep in relation to Toyota, Nissan, or Mercedes. So, Defender has always been my dream car. And what a disappointment I felt when I first got behind the wheel of this car. The steering wheel and pedal assembly are shifted to the left, the flat and hard chair is to the right. As a result, a more or less normal landing is obtained only with an open window and an elbow sticking out of it. He closed the window, and that was it, the elbow rested on the glass, and you could turn left only with small interceptions, in the style of English racers of the 20s of the last century. The clutch pedal is right next to the wall, you need to remove your foot and put it on the floor. You drive around the city, and with your left leg, top top, top top, top top, up down, up down. And then I realized that with all due respect to the legend and off-road capabilities of the Defender, believe me, I have traveled enough on this car, and not only on asphalt, I will never buy it myself. Well, why do I need a car in which I cannot turn left in winter? They say you need to sit down to death. They say, endure, fall in love, the body will take the form of Defender, and you will come with the car love and good air. Someone generally writes about all this with delight, they say, just what is such a carefully thought out landing that makes it easier to control the position of the wheels when driving off-road. Alas, this is not about me, and not about the many hundreds of former owners who tried, tried, suffered, did not sit down, and spat. And here's what's funny, all these wonders of ergonomics are peculiar only to Defender with a left-hand drive. In right-handed cars, the elbows do not stick into anything, and the steering wheel can be turned in any direction with the window closed, and there is a platform for resting the left leg. But the most offensive thing is that all these features are the result of that very stubborn English conservatism, like two separate taps and a plug in the wash basin. Because there is such a car, the Santana Anibal PS10 is an honest licensed copy of the Defender's predecessor, the Land Rover Series 3, which was produced from 2004 to 2010 in the Spanish city of Linares. The original left-hand drive Series 3 has exactly the same jams and ergonomics as the Defender. But Santana Anibal simply does not have them, both the steering wheel and the pedals are in place. Love number one, there are high mountains, there are endless steps. Actually, love does not require any reasons. It is for hatred that some specific reasons are needed, but people love simply because they love. And yet, confessing their love for their Land Rover Defender, the owners always mention the off-road capabilities and the new, huge world that this car opened up for them. 
it is able to completely change the idea of how to spend the weekend, and in a family that has felt the charm of exploring their native land, every outing is looked forward to. Even a standard car, all off-road preparation of which is limited to the installation of standard-sized mud tires, passes almost everywhere, unless, of course, by everywhere we mean the sports track of the Russian Trophy Raid Championship in the TR3 category, and even sitting on bridges, he is often able to crawl out on his own. And here the reduction gear ratio in the LT230 QRS transfer case, equal to 3.269, plays an important role. For comparison, the UAZ Hunter has a standard gear ratio of 1.94, there is a tuning option with a ratio of 2.58, the latest generation of the Mercedes G-Class has this figure of 2.93, the Jeep Wrangler is equipped with a gearbox with a reduction ratio of 2.72. And only the extreme version of the Rubicon flaunts a creeping dispenser with a ratio of 4.0. Add to this a high-torque diesel engine with an anti-stall system that automatically raises the engine speed with increasing load and does not allow it to stall, add a suspension with very large strokes. Professional off-road conquerors who claim that in stock condition the car is not very suitable for extreme off-roading are certainly absolutely right. The car has too many vulnerabilities, wings and sills are too easy to wrinkle, traction is too easy to bend and anthers are torn, it doesn't like water procedures too much. But in order to get to really interesting places, its capabilities are more than enough.